Entertainment console. Let's do it. Blah, 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 blah. Hey, it's Sam. Today we're going to make this entertainment console here on Urban Goods. For this project, I'm going to use two small sheets of plywood, each measuring 1200 millimeters by 800. I'm in the middle of building a new workshop, so for the time being, I'm doing a benuator. If you know what that means, comment below. I'm using marine ply only because it has an AA face, meaning it has no blemishes on either face. Most radiator ply has a C and D side and has ugly knots and patches. I bought myself a track saw so I decided to test it out. I haven't really dialed it in to get perfect cuts yet, so I ended up going back to my DIY track saw with my circular saw. Basically I'm cutting both these two sheets in half lengthways. As you can see, I'm using my awesome dust extraction system, <laughs> but let's be honest, it's so much easier than sweeping it up. I don't know why I didn't film myself for the second sheet, but I cut it exactly the same as the first. With one of those halves, I cut two sides at 400 by 400. I had to make two shallow cuts about 7mm wide in both the bottom and top longer pieces. This is for the doors to slide in. I'm pretty sure this cut is called a dado cut, but I don't really know woodworking terms, so um, if that's the right thing, just can you pop it in the comments? Cheers. Also, if you like this video, please hit that big red subscribe button. Since my blade of my circular saw is only a couple millimeters thick, I had to make this wider by moving my straight edge about a bazillion times. I got my pegboard and made sure it fit. Once it did, I moved on to the next top piece and did exactly the same thing. To clean up any loose timber in the grooves, I used a flat blade screwdriver and scraped it clean. Most of you probably have seen this, but this is a pocket hole jig. It makes box making really easy. Basically, you drill a pilot hole on an angle and use a special pocket screw to join the pieces together. These holes will be underneath, so you won't be able to see them. All the other holes are inside the unit, so with the doors closed, there'll be nothing to see. I made a couple of mistakes on my locations of some of my pocket holes. It's not such a big deal as everything is in the inside of the box, but I should have triple checked so that's my fault. I put the box together using pocket screws. I didn't film this as it is pretty straightforward. I picked up these legs from Bunnings, which is similar to the American Home Depot or Lowe's. The colour I chose to paint them was called Go Go Blue. It's actually a little green, but you can't really tell in the video or pictures. It's an enamel paint, so it's very durable, and it is ready for its second coat within 30 minutes. I took measurements for the sliding doors at the front, making sure to add the 5mm or so that will go inside the top and bottom tracks. For the doors I'm using pegboard. Pegboard is used mainly to store tools vertically on hooks. I really like the pattern so I'll try using it for these doors. I was worried at the start the door would be too flexible as the board only comes in 6mm masonite. Masonite's like a compressed fibre sort of material so it's not really strong like plywood but I'll give it a crack and see if it works. The piece I got was just long enough to cut in half to get two doors out of. I inserted the doors into the top track and then squeezed it into the bottom track to make sure everything slid nicely. I was actually pretty surprised on how well it slid. I thought there was going to be a bit more friction, but I was stoked with the results. Originally I was going to put handles on each of the doors, but I chose to use a 60mm hole saw to cut two holes in each of the doors. I painted both the doors the same colour as the legs. I flipped the unit upside down and screwed on the legs, making sure that they were all the same distances from the corners. I put the doors back on and started to measure my back panel and also measure my centre divider.
Here's a little tip I learnt to get stickers off. Use a hot air gun and peel back the sticker slowly. You might need to use a razor blade to get the uncooperative bits off. I put in the center divider and screwed it in. Eventually it will have shelves inside the TV stand, but at the moment I'll just have a divider. For the back panel I used 6mm plywood. I cut it to size and I screwed it onto the back with some help of some quick clamps. I gave the whole TV stand a sand with 180 grit making sure not to sand too much in one spot as the veneers aren't that thick. I did two coats of polyurethane, this one in particular has a matte finish. Overall I'm pretty happy with the results. If you liked the video, please hit that subscribe button and that thumbs up. Also drop a comment below on what piece of furniture you'd like to see next. Thanks.